الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم أما بعد الإمام النووي رحمه الله تعالى يقول في كتاب الأدب من رياض الصالحين The Book of Manners from Riyadh al-Salihin يقول في باب حفظ السر Chapter The Secrecy of Private Matters which means guarding secrets the etiquette of guarding secrets and the importance of guarding secrets If someone asked you and we mentioned that earlier in many sessions before that the meaning of it, the simple way one very simple way of defining a secret is if someone wanted to say something to you and they look behind their face <coughs> it means they're telling you a secret because the reason this person looked behind like this, the reason they looked behind them, behind themselves, they want to see if someone else is listening. And if someone else was listening, that means they're going to become more private, more reserved. <coughs> so now, again, to recognize a secret, the person does not have to tell you, listen, it's a secret, don't tell anyone. They don't have to say that. They can just simply pronounce it and say it to you, making, careful, making sure that no one else is listening. So here's now Imam al-Nawr, rahimahullah ta'ala, يروي حديث عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها عن أم المؤمنين عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت كنا أزواج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عندنا عائشة she said one one day one occasion all the wives of the Lord's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم were with him and that was during the end of his life صلى الله عليه وسلم when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was in his was his ailing and he was basically in his in his death illness. Uh, he wasn't able to rotate, do the regular rotation to visit the houses of the wives of Rasulullah So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, and the Prophet was always asking, where am I going to be next day, where am I going to be tomorrow? So the other wives, they realized he's being too physically ill right now, and physically weak, and he wasn't able to keep rotating, so he was suggesting and asking if he could stay with the house of Aisha. So they understood that, that gesture from him, radiallahu anha. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, why don't you rest in the house of Aisha and we, came, we come over to visit you? So Rasulullah stayed in the house of Aisha for the last few days before he passed away. It was actually over a week, over to almost 10 days, of up for 14 days. So then, on one of these occasions, the wives of Rasulullah they came over to visit. So they were around him. That's when Aisha she said, when the wife of Rasulullah was around him, فَأَقْبَلَتْ فَاطِمَةً Fatima, his daughter, radiallahu ta'ala, fa'akbalat radiallahu anha tamshi. Aisha speaking about Fatima, she said, Then his daughter Fatima, radiallahu anha, who walked after the style of, his, of, her, uh, of her father, she said that, fa'akbalat ma tamshi ma tukhtu mashyatuha mishyata rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shayna. Which means she, used, she came walking, and subhanallah, the, her walking style was like her father. You know, in English they say, like father, like son. And in this case, it's Fatima. The Prophet said his daughter, she looked like him in the way she walks. And even they say about her, she's the closest to, that resembles her father. Of all the children he had, she was the most resembling to him. So he said to her, so, so she said actually uh, uh, about her that she was she walked exactly reminding her with the style of Rasulullah It seems that Aisha she hadn't she had not seen the Prophet walking for for a while because he was lying in bed all this time. So when Fatima came in walking, Aisha looked at her and looked like Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah, just like her father. She walks exactly like her father Fatima Imagine her father sees her coming. Can you imagine? You, you see your older daughter or younger daughter in this case. His younger daughter was coming into his house and he sees her. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How would you receive your daughter as she comes in? Especially in front of your wife. Well, you have one wife now. By the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all his wives are around him and his daughter is coming in. How do you expect Rasulullah to receive his daughter? The Prophet immediately قالت فلما رآها رحب بها When he saw her, he welcomed her. Immediately رحب بها وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم مرحبا بابنتي Welcome my dear daughter. 
Welcome, my dear. Allah. Look how even the Prophet said the Messenger of Allah still assuming his role as a father. He never abandoned this role. He was on his deathbed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he sees his beloved Fatima, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa ta'ala. Fatima, she comes in, says, marhaban ibnati, welcome, my dear daughter. So even in a position like this, some people might be reserved in the way they might, you know, show this kind of uh, in greeting, specifically that this daughter, she's not the, the daughter of any of his wives anymore. Anyway. It was Khadija, anha. So there might be some sensitivity, some issues. Still, the Prophet وسلم, he would favor his daughter. So he said to her, Marhaban bibnati. Thumma ajlasaha an yameenihi aw an She said, then he brought her next to him, to the right side or the left side. Actually, she forgot which side she was on, right side or left side. But she remembered, remembered one important thing, that he brought her next to him. Right next to him, which means even if anyone was sitting there, he would, the Prophet says, he would move a little bit to give space for Fatima. He brings her as close as possible. That's his dear daughter, Fatima. When she sat next to the Prophet, the Prophet he immediately starts speaking to his daughter. He whispered something to her. You know, when you have. You know, do you want to stare? This is your daughter. You want to say something special? It's okay. Two whispers in her ear. So he whispered some, something to Fatima. When she heard that, she started crying. And she cried profusely, basically. She started tearing. And subhanAllah, the Prophet again was a father. How could he be the reason of causing so much pain for his daughter? When he saw how much she was panicking, how, she, how much she was crying, unhappy basically because of what he said to her. He whispered again. He whispered to her again. So she started smiling or giggling in other narration. So the first time she cried, the second one she laughed. And I want you to be in the position of all the women around the Prophet. He's whispering to Fatima, she cries. Then two seconds later, he whispers something else, all her tears dries out, and she starts now smiling or even laughing. Everybody's gonna be thinking, what happened? What did he say? What, did, what was that all about? So Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she, of course, she, she cried and she, she laughed. As she was leaving, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala she escorted her, she was taking her out. فَقُلْتُ لَهَا خصك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من بين نسائه بالسراق ثم أنت تبكي so she told her she said listen يا عائشة يا فاطمة يا فاطمة the messenger of Allah has made he has favored you over everybody else among his wives by giving you secrets by whispering something to you and you cry because of that should be happy what would you cry for so فلما قام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so when the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم left I told him Aisha, basically, when she was speaking to Fatima, telling her, why would you cry? Basically, she's trying to, you know, to, 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 to sympathize with her. She says, it's all right, it's all right, Fatima. I mean, look, the Prophet is just giving you specific attention from among all the wives. He's giving you special attention. Why should you cry? But then she waited when the Prophet left. Then she told her, what's that wrong? Why did you cry for them? What was it? What had made you cry? فقالت فاطمة رضي الله تعالى عنها ما كنت لغشية على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سرقة. she said you know what I cannot I cannot tell you I cannot disclose the secret of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم because you saw him whispering that to me if he wanted you to know he would have said that publicly but that he whispered that to me it's a secret must be a secret so I'm not in a position to disclose that to you so she left her for a while. After some time, the Prophet passed away. She met Fatima some other occasion afterwards. And she said, She said to her after she met him a while back, after that, Now, when Allah's Messenger has passed away, I will, she said to her, actually, um, um, when Allah's Messenger passed away, I said to her, 
I now, I now ask you by the rights I have in respect of you to tell me what Allah's Messenger had told you. Basically, you know whom I am to I'm uh, the widow of your father. I'm your stepmother. And I'm also considered the mother of the believers, Ummul Mu'mini. In all these are hukuk, these are rights, you know, at least, you know. Please, let me know. What did the Prophet tell you that? For Fatima, she told her, now that the Prophet has passed away, I can tell. That's it. So he's gone now, I can tell you what he said. فقالت, now I can tell. أما حين سارني في المرة الأولى فأخبرني أن جبريل كان يعرضه القرآن في كل سنة مرة أو مرتين. She said to her, the first time he told me, when he whispered to me, he told me, Jibreel used to listen to my recitation of the Quran and then recited back to me once a year. He used to do that once a year. And this time of the year, Ramadan, he did it twice. So every time he comes once in Ramadan, but this time he comes twice to review the Quran with him. What does that mean? What could he understand from this? So he told her, He told her, and because of that, I perceive that my death is approaching. The reason he came, the reason he came to me twice in this Ramadan in particular, it seemed that I'm about to leave. So that's why he wanted to make sure, double check the recitation of the Quran with him. So he did that. So he told her, Fattaqillah was believed. He told her, therefore, I'm giving you the advice. Be, be, be patient. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be dutiful to Allah and be patient. Which means I'm dying. I want you to be patient. And that is we learn from this that the family, a member of the household, the father, should make sure that before he or she basically reach that age, that they give advice to their parents, to their children, to the who stay behind them, after them, that they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they remain quiet and they remain patient. They should remain patient. They don't want to panic after the death of the beloved one. فَقَالَ لَهَا فَاتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَاصْبِرِ فَإِنَّهُ نِعْمَ السَّلَفُ أَنَا لَكِ He told her, I want you to be patient and steadfast, for I shall be an excellent forerunner for you. Which means, I'll be waiting for you. You're just coming after me. I'll be waiting for you. And you remember me. They say, remember what I've done for you. So be patient. When I heard that, I started crying. Can you imagine Fatima radiallahu ta'ala? See how painful the situation for Fatima radiallahu ta'ala. The first thing she lived when she was very young and very tender radiallahu ta'ala. She was very young when she saw all the humiliation, all the torture, all the, the difficulties her father had to go through when he was delivering the message. In, uh, in Mecca. She was the one. She was the one. When Ashqa Ahl Quraysh, when Ashqa Quraysh, when this wicked man of Quraysh, he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prostrating there in Mecca, close to, 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 to the Kaaba. And they knew about someone who was slaughtering the Kaaba. So one of them, he whispered to the other, he says, who, go, who can go and take the intestine of the cow from such and such house and throw it on the back of Muhammad when he prostrates, and I'll give him such and such as a reward. فَقَامَ أَشْقَى فُرَيْشِ One of these guys actually came out, and he grabbed that felt, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ And he waited for the Prophet ﷺ when he went to the sujood, he came and he threw it on his back. On the back of Rasulullah ﷺ, while he was in sujood. And he, run, he started running away laughing and making fun of it, and everybody was laughing. The Prophet ﷺ remained in that same position of sujood. He did not move. He didn't move. He stayed in his position ﷺ. Who came to the rescue? That little young girl back then, Fatima Allah. She came and she started pushing this away from the back of her father, cleaning his back, cleaning his head, ﷺ, crying. She was crying and she was basically speaking ill about these people. How could you do that to him? And she was crying, Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu he didn't see anything. He was not given yet the command or the order to retaliate or to defend himself in any other way but patience. 
That was it. That was given back to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the command to forgive. فَصْفَحَ الصَّفْحَ الْجَمِيلِ Which means forgive them, beautiful forgiveness. Be patient with them. The time is not yet to respond. So that was Fatima radiallahu She saw that. She grew up seeing her father living three years and her mother as well, Khadija. They both lived the three years of the boycott in Sharq Abu Talib, the valley of Abu Talib. When they had, they were not allowed to find, to smuggle food for them, to trade with them, to bring anything that they could sustain their lives with. They could not do that. She lived that. She was one of those who suffered, radiallahu anha. And then she saw how her mother, she was affected greatly because of that malnutrition, because of that uh, three years, three continuous years, subhanAllah. And by the end of that season, she died. She witnessed the death of her mother. And then at least she still had siblings. But her three, three brothers, the boys, she witnessed their death in a very, a very young age. All of them died when they were in their infancy. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala, she lived long enough to enjoy the company of her sisters. Um Kulthum, Ruqayya, and Zainab radiallahu anha. However, not for too long. As for Ruqayya and Um Kulthum, they died very quickly. And she was, she was there, she saw that. Who was left for her? Her father, her sister Zainab, and her husband of course. Then, her oldest sister passed away. And now she's the only child left for Rasulullah. Imagine now, put, her, put all of this in perspective. Now there is Rasulullah from in her entire family. He's the only one left for her, except now that she has Hassan and Hussein. She had her beautiful kids, Al Hassan and Hussein. These are the, the fruit of the heart of Rasulullah. The Prophet ﷺ used to quit so many things in the community just to go and play with Al-Hasan and Hussein, her kids, radiallahu anha. So these are the fruit of the heart of Rasulullah ﷺ. And Fatima is there, she knew how much they loved their grandfather. She knew how much when the Prophet comes home, he brings so much fun with him for the kids. So he loved, she loved that, radiallahu anha. And now Rasulullah ﷺ sitting there on his deathbed and he's whispering to Fatima, Ya Fatima, I'm going to be leaving very soon. So Tatullah was I want you to be patient. What do you expect her response to be? Crying. She cried. She cried her eyes out. That's what Aisha she said. Cried Which means she cried so much because of that. And then the Prophet ﷺ could not see his daughter subhanAllah crying like this. He couldn't see it. When he saw me cry so much, he didn't want to leave me at that note of crying. <coughs> so he whispered again to me, فَقَالَ يَا فَاطِمَ أَمَا تَرْضَيْنَا أَن تَكُونِ سَيِّدَةَ نِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَوْ سَيِّدَةَ نِسَاءِ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ قَالَتْ فَضَحِكْتُ ضَحِكِي الَّذِي رَأَيْتَ he, he, she said that, he told her, he whispered again to her, he says, Oh Fatima, are you not pleased that you will be the chief among the believing women or the crown of women of this ummah. In another narration, he said, Rayhana Sayyidat Nisa Ahl al Jannah. You will be the fair lady of Al Jannah. Jama'a, any woman would object to this kind of uh, rank or position in this life or the akhirah? Of course not. Everyone would love to be like So Fatima, when she heard that, she smiled. She said, Of course, yeah, why not? So I'll be that lady. And he was giving her the promise. You shall be this lady in Al Jannah. Sayyidat Nisa Al Jannah. You'll be the fair lady of Al Jannah. Some of the ulama in the commentary on this hadith they said he gave her also a, a subtle message. That subtle message that you're going to be coming after me good, which means you're going to be joining me in Al Jannah very soon. So, you know, it's okay. And sure enough, six months after the Prophet passed away, she died. So we see here from this hadith that Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she took uh, uh, that secret from Rasulullah sallallahu she kept it there and she wouldn't tell anyone, not even Aisha radiallahu until the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa passed away. When he passed away, it's no longer a secret. This is part of the knowledge that she wanted to share with the Ummah. So she said, 
And she said that proudly. I mean, if someone tells you, by the way, I'm going to make you, inshallah, ta'ala, the chief for this ummah. Uh, you might feel embarrassed. I don't think I deserve it. I don't think this, I don't think that, and so on. But Fatima, radiallahu ta'ala, she was given this news from whom? From Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not just her father. He was the messenger of Allah. So when she was asked, what was that all about? She said, that's what he told me. And I'm proud of it. I'm happy. Alhamdulillah, I'm going to be one of those ladies. So Fatima, radiallahu ta'ala, she kept that secret. It's very important if someone tells you a secret, that you stay and you keep that secret actually with you. قالت فضحكت ضحك الذي رأيت والحديث متفق عليه. This is Bukhari and Muslim. والله. Any question? Fadl. So Fatima is probably less than thirty. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
very famous classical uh, collection of hadith by Imam Tirmidhi, famous muhadith that he wrote uh, sunnah. So you can find that in both Arabic and English, and I think there's also available uh, version in Urdu as well if you read uh, this language. But if not, then it's available in Arabic and English in different languages. called al Shama'il al Muhammadiyya, the noble characteristics of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahu ta'ala. Anakallahu alhamdulillah. We will call the Adhan, inshaAllah, later on.